just a quick one to let you know before we start the video, I have actually started streaming on Twitch, Mixer and YouTube. So if this is something you might be interested in, please do help me out and follow me on those platforms. It actually really does help a lot. I kind of play video games, just chat, do IRL stuff, like listen to great music. That's pretty much it. So if that's your kind of bag, then yeah, please do give me a follow. I'll leave a link to both the Mixer and Twitch channels in the description below. Today we're going to be looking at all of the rares, their locations and drops inside of Stranglethorn Vale. There are 8 rares in this zone and the level range is from 37 to a 57 elite, so quite a varied zone for rares this, and unlike the desolate zone there are actually some unique drops for these ones. So without further ado, let's check it out. Glugal. First up we have Glugul who hangs around in the Kalai ruins. Glugul is a level 37 murloc and he's distinctive because he is kind of like a lot paler than the ones in the area so he's pretty easy to spot. He has multiple spawn points near the ruins, one is just to the right of the track down towards the ruins and another one is actually in the pool itself. If he is spawned in the pool you need to be careful because it's pretty dense with murlocs there and yeah you can you can generally have quite a bad time they do hit reasonably hard when they gang up on you in two, twos or threes. Glugul doesn't actually have any special abilities and killing him will just net you one random green I think between level 31 to 35. Rowlock Up next we have Rolock, a level 38 ogre that patrols around the Mizjar ruins just to the east of Gromgold base camp. Because this is just to the east, this guy is probably going to be dead a lot of the time as he actually walks on one of the main paths to get onto the kind of artery that runs down through Stranglethorn Vale. Yeah, he literally just walks on the path so you're going to have tons and tons of players just killing this guy completely by chance. To be fair though, he's not really that interesting to kill. Killing him will just give you another random green. Kermok. Up next we have Kermok, a level 42 gorilla that hangs around just to the south of the ruins of Jabwal. As you're going past the arena, just before the next gate towards Booty Bay, you'll see a wall that has been damaged. If you go through there and then hang a right, Kermok, this is the only place that he spawns in. There are loads and loads of panthers in this area as well, so you do need to be careful. You can accidentally pull uh, multiple creatures at once. Kermok himself, there's not really much to him. As he's a gorilla, he actually has a fair bit of health, but nothing that should be kind of too unreasonable for your level. And uh, yeah, basically the, the trick is just don't pull a load of hidden panthers otherwise you will probably die because the panthers do do a fair bit of damage. There's nothing special about this guy, I have a feeling he has some sort of thunderclap, um, so that might be something to be aware of but it's more of just an annoyance than anything. And killing him will net you one random green. Verifonics. Verifonix is up next, and Verifonix is a level 32 goblin that hangs around literally 100 yards on the opposite side of the valley to Kermok. This is a really weird one, the guy himself is actually neutral so he won't attack you if you get close to him. And yeah, he's just kind of there, it's, it's really weird, I don't think he actually has any of the spawns either so that's even more weird. But yeah, um, just some random guy. You do have to be really careful with this guy though, I have killed him before and I have memories of trying to kill him in Vanilla WoW and Burning Crusade and there were so many panthers near him, there's like three or four so you really need to be careful don't engage in him first because he's a neutral kill the panthers first and then engage he does eh, moderate damage killing him will net you a random green 
Ripper. Up next we have Ripper, a level 44, I guess you would say piranha? Fish? Angry looking fish, I know that for sure. But yeah, a level 44 fish creature that roams around the, outs the waters outside of Booty Bay and then down onto the southern shores. Uh, this guy is actually really hard to find. It took me ages to track him down just because he actually travels a fair bit of distance and that is marked out on the map. I don't believe he roams any further than that, but I could be wrong. I didn't follow him for hours and hours, so, you know, just take that with a pinch of salt. Guy's super easy to kill, just make sure you don't drown, and he gives you a random green. Lord Sacrosis. Okay, so finally we get to the interesting ones. Up next is Lord Sacrosis, our sixth rare of the video, and he is a level 45 Naga that hangs around in the Nekmani Wellspring. Lord Sacrosis is the only one that patrols the bridge, and there isn't really anything special about him. I believe he casts some sort of poison on you that does damage, but aside from that, nothing else to really worry about. The poison actually doesn't do that much damage either, it's perfectly survivable. Yeah, and just I would just say kite this guy or pull him away from the bridge, really. But here's the interesting thing. If you kill him, you have a 50% chance to get the Lord Sacrus's Scepter or a 50% chance to get the Talisman of the Naga. Both of these are actually really good items for level 40, especially low level 40. I would definitely recommend killing this guy if you're in the area. Scale Belly. Up next we have another very interesting rare and possibly the most famous one in Stranglethorn Vale and that is Scalebelly, the level 45 Basilisk. Scalebelly is actually inside of Crystal Vein Mine and he's kind of all the way at the back um, so you're going to have to have a bit of a fight to get in there. There's a couple of quests that take you into the mine or around that area um, but you never end up really going all the way back there to collect all the mats for the quest so you might have to go out of your way to go get this one. He's pretty easy to spot as well. All of the basilisks in the mine are kind of this bluey green colour, and Scale Belly's like much bigger, and he's like got a, he's huge and orangey yellow, so he's he's really not that uh, hard to miss. Uh, it does fighting him. He's actually really easy to fight because he's a, a basilisk. He actually has well, I don't know is it basilisk? Is that the right thing? I think it is. Um, he has loads of armour, so if you're a melee, you may have some trouble. And just make sure you're not pulling him with other. And with the basilisk. All of the ones in Crystal Man, they also do stun you as well, like they do a 10 second petrification, so you need to be aware of that. Now, the reason this guy is so sought after or so famous is because of one of his drops, which just so happens to be the lowest one. He has a 75% chance to drop the indescent scale leggings, or iridescent scale leggings rather, and a 25% chance to drop the chromatic sword. The chromatic sword is what people want. In Transmogira, People used to absolutely love this. Because we're playing Classic WoW, you just get the really cool looks. But here's a picture of it. It's like four or five different colours that show up on a sword. It's just really awesome. High Priestess, High Watner. And last but not least, we have High Priestess High Watner, the, uh, let's say, challenge mob of this zone, um, or the challenge row of this zone. She is a level 57 elite priestess that hangs around near the entrance of Zul'Garub. So basically, if you're questing in STV, there is no way you're going to kill this rare. You're going to have to definitely come back when you're 60, or just get a group together specifically to kill her. Now, she's really hard to kill because not only do you have to fight her, but you have to fight all of the elites on the way up there. And they're just, they hit really hard and they're really painful. Uh, she herself has a heal, a hex and a shadow bolt volley. The hex is really annoying if you're uh, playing as a two because she can obviously just hex you for like 10 seconds. The heal is really annoying and so is the shadow bolt. 
So yeah, you really have to go out your way to fight this one. This is definitely a challenge. I think this is the hardest rare to date that I've done a video on. However, you will be rewarded. Oh, no you won't actually, because when I killed her this time, I didn't even get a green. So yeah, that's really disappointing. Like, I didn't even get a green, it's the hardest rare to date. Yeah, what's up with that blizzard? So that brings to an end this video, that was all 8 rares in Stranglethorn Vale, their locations and drops. I hope you enjoyed it. I forgot to actually record an outro for this one, so yeah, you just get the map for a little bit longer. I will obviously include a link in the description to an imager link where you can go have a look at that and download that separately. Overall, Stranglethorn Vale, uh, pretty good actually. Um, it's not bad, there's a good mix of kind of just random greens and, and some nice, the, the actual loot you can get is pretty cool, or just kind of sought after because it's, you know, of vanity reasons. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.